Your makeup on, Doraemon voice. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay, tempat dimensi. I swear to God, there's a ghost <laughs> that is typing somewhere yeah. in the background. Yeah, I wonder if it's those guys at um, Stream Backyard, Stream Yard. I watch yourselves Abir, now. Abir. We're going live already. Abir. <laughs> can't hear Abir. We can't hear her. Abir. Abir? Abir. All right. Yeah, you have to okay. scream. I think Abir can't really hear you too well. Um, Crap, okay. as you'd know it, I'm okay. Let's go. Okay, hello everybody. I'm Hetal Doshi, and together with me are five amazing women. We have Sharmila Ravindran, who is a lawyer. We have Izana, who is the co-founder for. Izana, are you are you there still? Hello, Izana, did we lose you? Okay, uh -oh. we may, we may, we we're probably going to have a little bit of difficulties here and there, unfortunately. But please, please bear with us, because God knows, um, Take yeah, you know, you, right? yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. Beat so, events. so, who else do we have? Tamina. Tamina is an independent journalist, and she does loads of stuff. You probably know quite a bit of her work on Bernama, but but Tam, Tam, you also do other stuff, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah. I work actively in the feminism and women's rights movement. I write, I research, I teach, etc. Yeah, fantastic. And we have people coming in and out all the time. This is crazy. Uh, we also have uh, Lily. Lily, do you want to share a little bit about yourself? Hi. I guess I would say I am a technology activist. So I deal a yeah. lot in the digital uh, industry and technology industry. So yep. I come across a lot of guys in my uh, industry. <laughs> a lot, okay, a lot of. Yeah. All right. And um, Izana, what do you do, Izana? I know you sure. are the co-founder of Project Goals for Girls. What are you doing there? Yeah. Um, my full-time job is in consulting, but it's a fairly um, gender balanced area. But my one of the NGOs that I run is Project Goals for Girls. Uh, yeah, the global NGO, and of course I'm with Lina, with the two other ladies here. Fantastic. Amir, who are you? I am a full-time pricing actuary attached to uh, an insurance company here. Um, that's what I do full-time, but part-time I run Lina in Malaysia together with Izana and Sharmila and the rest of the amazing ladies um, on the board and also in the team. So Lina in Malaysia is a woman empowerment platform that champions women to be the best version of themselves. Fantastic. And I, I spoke on behalf of Shamila earlier. Shamila, who are you? I uh, I run my own law firm in Monkiara. I've been in legal yeah. practice for 17 years. And yeah. uh, I'm part of Lean in Malaysia as well with Izana and Abir and a whole load of amazing women. I also yeah. do a bit of, I, I was the past uh, chairperson for the Gender Equality and Diversity Committee under the Kuala Lumpur Bar. Uh, this year, another amazing woman has taken over. So, yeah, we, we basically do uh, uh, gender work Fantastic. as best and, as we can. Yeah. yeah, and you're doing a significant amount of that. I'd just like to maybe share my own personal encounters with each one of you as well. Um, and why... why Obviously, it's amazing to be here with you as well. Lily, I met a while ago, and she's just a thought leader. She's a real thinker, and she speaks super eloquently, and uh, that's why she's here, piecing thoughts together articulately. Tamina is just one of the most uh, versatile people that I know, super well-spoken. But more than that, I admire her for her prep work and her discipline. She's always super prepared. She always has the best context, data, uh, and she always makes people, pe like she always puts people on a specific time chain movement to be able to extract the best out of them. Aber is just, Aber is just Aber. She's hilarious. She's uh, super cute, um, charming, and she always cares about making sure aesthetically everything looks good. Izana, I've barely known, unfortunately, but from the time that I've known you, I know that you're very passionate about um, supporting Lean In, and obviously you've done something for the first time through um, the project that you're working on, and I understand as well that you're trying to expand it um, across to other countries as well. Sham is not here. She's just dropped off for a little while, but and she will be back again shortly. Don't want her to miss this. Sham, Sorry. welcome back. 
And Sharon is just one of the kindest people that I know. She has supported me in a lot of personal times in my life, but also uh, professionally as well, whenever I have to do contracts uh, for companies and stuff like that. So we are here together, ladies, because of a recent, recent incident that has taken place in Malaysia, um, where um, the authorities made a suggestion about how women could behave or should behave during the NPO. And um, just a couple of guidelines before we start. We are going to go on a very constructive platform, no matter uh, how much we feel um, as strongly as we do. And I remember Tamina once telling me that that's the problem. When we have to be constructive, we hold on and we hold on and we hold on. And that becomes, what, do you, what is the word that you use, Tamina? can't remember which of many rage. conversations it was rage. about this. <laughs> you can't you call it rage and the inability to heal yeah. before the next uh, comes in as well. Uh, regardless, they have apologized for uh, their statements and um, it would just be nice to say that it was recognized and accepted. And, um, so ladies, in one word, in one word, um, how do you feel about the recent event? So in one, one emotion. Appalled. Um, disappointed felt, disappointed Tom. exhausted Ken? exhausted right um izana i was shocked when i saw that you shocked okay um aber is not in right now uh, i'm sure she had she would definitely have a strong feeling towards it as well um I actually felt a little confused <laughs> because, mm, yeah, there's no, 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 because I was just really, really, really perplexed as to how this could even have taken place. Yeah. So, um, Abra is just coming in now. We'll just wait for her comment. But in the meantime, I get you ladies to think about uh, if you re remember any other previous incidents, because I just want everyone to be quite clear that this is not a one-time thing and this is not necessarily from the government per se, but this is a general thing that we keep hearing about how women should behave. So I'm um, just gonna try and get Abir in, but please do think about some stories or incidents that have happened. Abir, how do you feel in one word about the incident? Sorry, I got, I got off just now. <laughs> I know, how do you feel in one word about the incident? One word only. Frustrated. I was really frustrated. That's my word. Okay. Yeah. All right. And do, do, do we remember any... So are there many incidents like this where women are told about how they need to behave or who they need to be in the workplace in the past? Are there many incidents? Can you remember any? Oh, absolutely. Let me start. Um, I'm talking here about politicians because when, mm -hmm. when, it, when we're speaking about power hierarchies, uh, women in power who are visible. I think it doesn't get any more visible than a politician. Mm -hmm. I remember an incident, I think it was um, early last year, where uh, YB Hannah Yo was actually told by netizens, uh, you need to wear lipstick. Ooh. Yeah, that's and right. Yeah. Remember that one? Yeah. Then there was mm -hmm. another one with uh, YB Nurul Iza. Um, she was a guest on a radio talk show that also had a video component. Mm -hmm. And a man in the comments actually typed and said, uh, look, you need to wear your hijab properly. So it covers yeah. your your chest. So I yeah. mean, uh, this is just yeah. off the top of my head. Yeah, yeah. off the top of my head. So these are anybody else happen remember any incident? Out. Right. Well, I remember. Um, I think I. Sorry. The, go ahead. The, 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 Lily, you want to go first? Yeah, the gymnast incident. Remember, we you know yeah. people didn't want her to wear her gymnastic suit because of some camel toe apparently that can be seen. yes oh like, yeah oh my god yes ridiculous. yes who else oh, was yeah so anybody else Sean, you were saying something Sean? i think as early as last month our deputy minister of uh, women and family development she stated that uh, she stated that she wanted to implement a clothing policy for flight attendants and that oh, was yeah. just last month and then uh, another incident, I think in August 2019, there was a, a senator who proposed a law to protect men from being s seduced by women into committing uh, sex crimes because he said women co uh, men commit sex crimes because of how women dress and act. So, yeah. Okay, all right. So, um, um, anybody else? 
Abir, do you remember any incidents? I wonder if I think there are a lot of um, incidents ago, that um, took in Portland, place. Think, uh, oops, sorry, uh, Izana and Abir were both there. speaking at the same time. Chop, chop, one second. Abir, do you... Um, Abir, do you want to go first? Izana, just hang on one second. Yeah, sure. I just wanted to highlight about the cases re with regard to, um, you know, rapes, where a lot of times you read on social media that people are blaming on how the victim's war that lured the rapist to, you know, rape her. And I think, um, I thought that we have gone way past the idea of you don't blame, you don't blame the victim for what she wears, but then... Surprisingly, a lot of netizens on the ground are still thinking that, you know, uh, she's very, you know, she wore, uh, she wore short skirts on the day that she was raped. So that's why, that's why that, you know, such a thing happened. So it's not just right. one incident, but a lot of, a lot of incidents Multiple. on the ground. Yeah. Um, Izana, do you yeah. remember any incidents uh, of public knowledge where everybody has this information as well? Sorry, can you say that again? Uh, yep. Do you remember any incidents or stories about how women are told, um, you know, what to wear or how to behave? I mean, for me, what sticks out is um, many years ago in Parliament, I think there was a comment about um, a leaky roof referring to oh, yeah. a woman in yes. a cycle. Um, amongst many of the crude comments that has happened um, mm. in in the parliament itself. Yeah. Uh, sorry, Hitop, I'm just going to mention that I cannot hear Abir, so in case I'm repeating any of the information he's saying, please let me know. Okay. okay, I will do that. I will try to be the translator in between as well, okay? Thank you so much, ladies. I just, you know, I think it's really valuable that we've captured uh, incidents rather than just making a generalized comment. And the point of this is that it's been an accumulation of um, being in between what like it's 2020 already now and we're still getting repeatedly these kind of comments that are coming out um i just want to make this very clear is this coming from men or women or both both okay both. Both. Yeah. yeah so um i think i just you know really like to make sure that i have a strong hold uh i, d I don't want this conversation to be anything except uh, it's not a gender thing. This is a patriarchal system. Both men and women are contributing to this, and it's not. It's not. Is it fair? Okay, I just yeah. like to add a media yeah. perspective to that uh, before we move on, since we're talking about incidents, things that we have noticed. Please. Or remember, this one actually cycles all the way back to the '90s. I remember distinctly there was an ad um, mm -hmm. that was, um, if I'm not mistaken, um, um, endorsed by the public, the public broadcast services that literally translated into saying, uh, we'll do something about rape if you do something about the length of your skirt. Oh, wow. No. This is from the 90s. This is from the 90s. Wow. Okay. Right. This is Malaysia, yeah? Malaysia, by the way. Right. So there you go. So I think that really perfectly frames why it is that such prevailing attitudes and stereotypes and um, deeply entrenched sexism still exists in our society today. It's perpetuated by media. Finding it really hard to do this interview now, actually, it's, it's really, uh, I'm sure each of you are feeling something about it as well. Uh, it, it, it's, it's what, 1990s till, till 2020, and we still haven't sorted this, this out. Um, would anyone like, because this uh, group is about mental health at work mm -hmm. and we're going to try and keep it as constructive as possible, but at the same time, I do want to run away from truth and this is not about blaming anybody. So I hope that anybody listening to this, you'll take it, you take this constructively uh, with no blame game and we don't want any drama out of this, we just want to have a conversation. Okay. Do any of you remember a story um, where you went, that you experienced at work? when you were told to be something. It may not be because you are a woman. Um, it was just told to you that you should be something or someone. If you can be specific about the context and maybe don't mention who the person is if you don't want to as well, how you felt in one word, you know, what kind of impact it had on you. Uh, how did it then make sense of the situation and did it rise you up or did it pull you down? Anybody would like to, to share a story? Let me start. Let me share my okay, story. Sean, thanks. <laughs> So I was told by my boss that um, I should put all uh, all plans of getting married and having children on hold um, because it'll get in the way of my career as a litigation lawyer. 
and then he went on to say that uh, uh, I I have to work ten times harder than any other lawyer in the in the firm uh, because I was an Indian woman to prove myself. So uh, I mean, obviously, it wasn't the most uh, healthy environment to work in. But I was there for quite a while because you know when you're young and you want to learn. Uh, you you take it you take you take what comes your way because you want to prove yourself, and so I took that for many years, and I went through two years of burnout after that, and uh, I eventually set up my own law firm. So it kind of in in a sense yes it was very negative it was very toxic, but I think it also fueled my desire to to be better and to work harder which I, i you know I, i'm a little uh, working harder is you know anyone can do that we all do it i think as women generally we tend to work harder because we tend to want to prove ourselves but i i think we should do that on our own volition and not because somebody tells you you're not good enough mm-hmm. or because you yeah. you've been put in a position where you doubt yourself or you you know they you you are made to believe that you are not good enough So yeah, mm. that's my story. Was it good? Was it good for you? Had he not said that, would your life be better or worse? I don't know. <laughs> I'm not very sure. But I know at that point, I just thought, okay, I love a good challenge. So you know, if you tell me I need to work ten times harder, yeah, I'm. I, I can do that. It's not yeah. So for you, you turned it into something really constructive, and obviously, you became your own boss, which means he's no longer your, your boss. Um, no. So, and thank you for sharing the story. As you were saying that, I saw Lily's whole body move backwards. And Tamina is super cool. She's like, I've heard all of this before already. Uh, Anyone else want to share a story? Uh, maybe I'll share. Of course, um, thanks. I guess being in the IT industry, I have um, a completely different uh, take. I hardly ever come across. Gender issues. Okay, so, sorry. Well, this is not about gender. This is okay. about has anybody told you to be something or to okay. do something that you are not? Okay. Uh, this is not. This is not a gender thing. This is sure. a psychological impact of being told. To be well, this is okay. It uh, it wasn't anyone telling me what I should be. It was an observation. Okay. So I was in um, Web Summit. In the um, in in Lisbon, uh, you know, seventy thousand geeks come, you know, from all over the world. We co- congregate there every year, and uh, there was a special track for women in tech uh, to have dinner together. So it was about two hundred, three hundred of us, right? So we were sitting around, and I just noticed that when we were introducing each other, uh, we'll introduce what we do and who we are, where we come from. But eventually, the conversation will lead to. Oh, my husband did this, or my my boyfriend did did this, you know. And it was almost as if the women are actually defining themselves by their partners. <laughs> so it was really weird because um, I don't do that. I don't bring in my my husband into the introduction. Most people don't even know my husband mm. exists. <laughs> mm. When I tell little anecdotes about how how you know mm. anti phobia he is, but. Um, I thought that was strange, and that was in a global. What are you setting. trying to say here? What are you trying to what say? What I'm here? trying to say is that you know, um, um, you know, I'm wondering whether we ourselves tell you know, um, you know, how we define ourselves is by you know the uh, men or women in our lives, you know, rather than projecting that. You know, you're kind of like you put yourself in this shell because of all these people around you. I don't know. <laughs> Mm. Uh, and and you know and for a lot of women it's by the men they hang out with. I think. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> that 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 we do end up, uh, fortunately or unfortunately, having ourselves defined by the partners that we have. Yes. Um. And for you, that's not that's not the case. Any any other ladies? Um. Um. Uh, uh, Lily, I've heard that many many times as well. I've heard yeah. that many many times as well. Right. But I'm not sure whether that's a good thing or bad thing. I'm really yeah, not yeah. sure. I'm not sure. Tim. Tem, Izana, Abir, uh, any any stories, personal stories about? Please ignore our gender for now. If that is part of it, that would be good as well. I mean, that, obviously that's who we are. But have you ever been told by anybody about who you need to be and what you need to be, um, and that impacted you in your life? Sure. Uh, if I could share. Um, Izana first, maybe then Abir. 
we'll yeah. swap it the other way around. Both of you seem to say, want to say the same thing as you want to speak at the exact same time. Um, Isana. <laughs> Yes. Yeah. So, uh, just a quick share. It was uh, when I was working overseas, and um, and instead of one of the bosses that I had worked with, uh, cut long story short, often told me that I should remove my sense of deference, or you know, in our culture, we um, are quite we're always crowdsourcing uh, opinions, mostly like in terms of. Uh, managing family expectations and things like that. But I remember I was told to remove my sense of deference, i.e. my Asian culture. Sorry, uh, remove your sense of what? Deference. 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 Am I the only one who know, doesn't know what that word means? Uh, so like, uh, basically what that yeah. means, in my Asian culture, we we defer to elders, we defer to... Uh, ah. Yeah. Okay, okay, all right. Oh my God. Because there was a lot of um, relocating, so of course mm -hmm. you'd have to take family into consideration. So I was told that, well, you should probably uh, remove that sense of deference and, um, you know, you need to make decisions for yourself. And, and that, for me, was very difficult because I take pride in the way our culture is and, and that is who I am. I'm an Asian woman mm -hmm. and um, my family is me who I am today. So mm -hmm. to... to tell me to remove it from my uh, decision-making process was fairly insulting. Um, You're right. And, and what impact it, did it have? Did, what impact did it have on you? Did you did you get better from it? Like, did you grow from that experience or did it really affect you for a long period of time? Well, it, um, that was the first time anybody's ever told me to remove that sense of deference because there are times where um, I'm abiding to hierarchy. There are times when I am exactly the opposite and it's uh, difficult for people. So I was a bit shocked that I was told to uh, remove that sense of deference. Uh, but for me, it, it made me reflect quite a bit uh, as in actually what are my values and principles and what are the metrics that I uh, place in priority when making a decision about work or my life? So mm -hmm, I, mm -hmm. after time, I realized that family is of utmost importance and I'm not about to let anyone tell me uh, what will be my metrics of decision. That is his or her problem and this is my problem. I choose Wonderful. to put it in. I became a lot more firm about that. Yeah. So it just reinstated uh, your values. As, as, as that is a priority and that will continue to be a priority. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Yeah. Um, and Abir, uh, uh, there's so much yeah. more that we can talk about, honestly, with each story uh, due to time, unfortunately. Yeah. But Abir, did you have a story as well? I do. I, I think um, I love the topic of today's session is because um, I grew up with a lot of um, challenges in life. The, you know, when I was in high school, I was telling everyone that I wanted to become an actuary growing up. And I was in the third class. I was in a boarding school. I was, I was in the third class. And then I've got this friend of mine from the first class telling me that I think you should uh, revisit that ambition of yours because to be an actuary, only you need, you, need, you need to be really, really smart and you need to be like from the first class. So I was like, okay, you know, um, I, you know, I hear you, but, you know, this is my life. But I was like 16 back then. So it really, it really um, uh, made me question about, uh, you know, am I choosing the right thing to do? Am I, mm. am I prioritizing what my skills are, what my strengths are and stuff like that? But I mm. think like, um, yeah, to cut the story short, I went and did my actuarial science degree, got a first class, went through my master's in actuarial management in the UK, was under a good scholarship, and now I'm, uh, you know, a pressing actuary. So what I'm trying to say here is that, you know, this... I, I grew up holding on to this motto, this, uh, to this quote that I learned from a movie, um, The Pursuit of Happiness. It's called, so Bill Smith in the movie said, do not let anyone tell you what you cannot do just because they can't. And yeah, um, I, you know, mm. from, from, from 16 years old until now I'm 32, I held on strong to that. And, you know, it was not, it was not just one incident. There were a lot of inc incidences, um, as I, you know, as a matter of fact about, um, how people perceive my character as aggressive and I was yes. always told to tone it down you know right right and yeah and then people were like why are you talking about women empowerment what are you trying to champion and things like that um, <laughs> telling me to, 
yeah, people will people are always telling me to like sit down and sit down, and I'm like, you know, I don't want to sit down. If I am, if I have the privileges to help champion the voices on the ground, then I will do it. You know, right? Um, and and I think what I think the impact to me was that I grew, I grew to learn not to um do things to prove to others, but more to like to prove to myself. And Fantastic. there were also, you know, and then and then I think um, as you overcome these challenges, then people come and tell you that, hey, congratulations, you're this, you're doing amazing stuff. And then there's this yeah. imposter syndrome that I have. I think everyone yeah. can relate to this. Like, oh, of no, course. this is not what I, you know, this is not yeah. like, no la, no la, you know, this is. Yeah. But I think another thing that um, I grew to learn from that is that you got to own your success. And yeah. yes, you know, you went to hell, you went to challenges and do not compare your challenges against other people's challenges. It's different stories. But you got yeah. to own your story. Well so done, you, Abe. Well done. So many different perspectives of um, Lily's one is about identity. Um, you know, how do you how do you identify with your partner so you don't? And why do people do it that way? Uh, Izana's one is about um, you know challenging her cultural preference or the way that she is culturally. Uh, Shamila's one is about. Um, Gender, obviously, Abir's one is about her profession of professional choices. Tem, I'm sure you've got 10 up your sleeve. But give us one. Uh, give us a real good one. <laughs> I'll give you a really short one. And this is something I've come across throughout <laughs> my tenure as a working uh, professional, regardless of uh, whether I was a freshie in uh, either the education or the entertainment or now the journalism and media industries. I have always been told that I am far too opinionated for a woman and this has been across the board either from men or that. even or yeah. even women in authority <laughs> so the thing i decided very very early on is that mm. um you know what people are entitled to that opinion yeah they're very opinionated for calling you opinionated <laughs> Too strong, right? Too strong. But what I decided very early on is that I would arm myself with enough data to back up every single thing which I felt strongly about. And therein lies my, my lifelong obsession with um, data, statistics, figures, particularly whatever upholds um, perspectives of you know, um, sexism, of violence against women, of economic inequality, because all of this when it comes down to fundamental questions, if you have the right sort of data and you frame it in the proper manner, there's absolutely no argument. Mm -hmm. Be it religious, and, be it cultural, be it structural. Yeah. Yeah. And and that's who you are, Tamina. That's what I've been like, you know, every time I've met you, I'm like, how does this girl have her facts so much in order? And it's like one interview after another. I just wanted to share a couple of things, right? Like when was, mm -hmm. when was this incident? Because for Abir, it was when she was like, what, 13 or 15, 11, what did you say? 16. 16, uh, Shamila, when was yours? 25. 25, Izana? I was 25. 30. 30, M? Uh, it's a continuing process, believe me. <laughs> <laughs> I can't give you all the dates. People, people and really, like really, it when, yeah. just a few years ago. Yeah, a few years ago. Yeah. So it could have yeah. it could have been an incident from all the way back when you were, um, yeah. and and you know I think if we allow ourselves this, you know, people's opinions of us could have started way 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 before that. But like Abir, from fifteen till today, that has serious impact on you. Um, I, I guess we can't stop people from saying what they want to. I, I have a mm. surprise question. I didn't tell you that I was going to say it, but. I want you to be really honest, okay? So you can be super honest. Have you ever told anyone to be a certain way? Oh, all the time. <laughs> <laughs> because I'm opinionated. I have. I'm guilty, I'm guilty of that as well. I'm Sham? guilty of that as well. Sham? Izana, sorry? I Definitely. I... Definitely, Sham? I don't actually. I I, I don't. I because I've been there and I, and I realized. Um, you know, I, I I hope you know my the lawyers my lawyers who work for me will attest to this. But I, I like uh, I I like diversity. You know, I mean, you yeah. come with you come not, as not you are. Men, not even men come more. Okay. 
No, I don't know lah. It's actually a very difficult question, you know. <laughs> it's a game I try of not to. It's a game of Hava. Wow. Actually, I would I would contest to that because charm is just one of those. Honestly, it's just one of those that always you know puts in as much. Oh, at least it's just her to make you feel good. Ten. Uh, personally, that is my biggest pet peeve. I am absolutely loath to tell anyone to be a certain way. To the point, I've been yeah. accused of being abs- of being, you know, utterly cold apathetic. and uh, apathetic. apathetic. But it's not. Yeah. It's just that I, I well and truly believe that everybody has the right to be exactly how they damn well please. Absolutely. In so far as in so far as it doesn't harm others, but even then, I feel as educated adults, we ought to yeah. have the self awareness to change what needs to be changed. Yes. So yeah, yeah. I, I, I never, yeah. I just don't. <laughs> Yeah. Um Tam, yeah, I I think, I think in my yeah, defense, go ahead. Sorry. Though, in my defense. <laughs> in my defense <laughs> nobody is yes, in your defense. Nobody is in defense. Um I you know, um having gone through it myself, uh, you know, in the workforce, there is a certain way that we can behave. And uh, it's a sort of like a lesson that I'm trying to pass down to the juniors in my team. Um, you know, in terms of how, how you should speak at work, but not on a gender basis kind of thing, but more like how to appear more professional. You know, your tone of voice, mm. the way that you carry yourself. So that's that's me telling someone how to behave and how to yeah. change the way the person carries themselves. So, <laughs> so, sure so, so, so for Abir, it's you know, feedback la versus opinion, is it? <laughs> okay, <laughs> all right, that's fine. Um, okay, so, um, you know, each one of you uh, in your own fair capacity and fair right, you have uh, broken through a lot of different types of, shattered a lot of different uh, levels of glass and walls and bricks and God knows what else. So mm. I just have, you know, in very simple few words, what is a frame of mind that helps you to thrive in this? I'm not again. I'm not talking about gender, but this is a patriarchal society. So everything that comes with being in a patriarchal society. What is one in a few words? What has helped you to really thrive? And in a world where there are a lot of opinions, there are a lot of people telling us what to do. Um, you've built this way of being. So in a few words, what is your way of being that helps you to thrive? Maybe we start the other um, way around. Yeah. Yeah. Very quickly. Um. I. And this is how I stay ahead of myself. What to speak of patriarchal society? I always, for anything related to do with my work, my career, I am one hundred percent over prepared. Hmm. Yeah. Okay. I put the and- time. I take the effort, and it shows in the quality of the work I do. Right. Isana. Full stop. Mm-hmm. All right. Thanks, Sam. I'm so I'm so sorry. The reception's really not good. I, you've been breaking out a little bit. What was the question? Okay. I'm I'm gonna type the question in. Or or can you hear me better now or no? I can I can hear you better now. Yeah. So the question is, uh, what frame do you have in your mind that helps you to thrive in a patriarchal society? Okay. Well, I think. The, the patriarchal society is our everyday life, right? Um, so it's not something we actually break away from. And that frame of mind is our natural everyday. And in all honesty, whenever I step out, if I'm out of the women empowerment, lean in, girls for girls environment, I do feel that there's still a lot of work. So it's actually my default position. You go in, it feels a little bit like going to war because... Like what Tim mentioned, you have to be over-prepared Absolutely. with your data, with your analogies, with your stories, with anecdotes, why this is important. Um, the recent uh, event that brought us here together actually brought me into a lot of heated conversation with uh, those who still believe in the patriarchal system because many found it amusing, though they have daughters and all that. So. I got into my usual mode and said, okay, these are the reasons why actually you need to advocate for this issue. It's a, it's a very natural process. It has become my day-to-day behavior. Mm. That's really well said. Thanks. Um, thanks, Isana. I just, uh, you know, apart from the over-prepared thing, which uh, Temina has said, and you've also 
uh, attested to that as well is that is important. I think what you say, this is not a system. This is our day to day on top of a system. Yeah. And every day we go out, it's a little bit like war, so to speak. And um, um, I guess it would be war for anybody, potentially, even in a patriarchal society. But what you're trying to say is make sure that you have all your facts, your analogies and everything in mind, especially when you have to try to have to fight people in your own community or your own culture who might have a completely opposite way of thinking. Exactly. Is that what you're saying? And it's quite shocking sometimes who people who are um, in your same community have the same kind of education. And it's really shocking some of the things that they say. And you really have to hold in your your temperament so that you get the message across. Because as soon as you're angry about about it, the message and the result that you want gets affected. Exactly. So you have to be very, very managed and deliver points in a way that they can relate because your goal is actually to convert their mind, not to fight with them, right? Hmm. Uh, this one is a real psychologist, like Izana. Your goal is to convert their mind. <laughs> okay. Uh, Lily, do you want to go? <laughs> okay, Lily, Lily, you're up. Oh, well, I think, um, I've always been the kind of girl who just, you know, I don't really over prepare. I just normally kind of person who just wing it. <laughs> uh, but when I do get into a situation where, you know, it's, you feel that it's a bit more patriarchal or more men around you, right? My state of mind is more, I don't think about the gender, okay? Still, I don't, still yeah, yeah, forget about the gender a bit. This yeah, is yeah. just so, about maybe how do you thrive? What frame so, of mind so, do you have? So, so, so wait, if, if I really want to thrive, I thrive from the people around me. I surround myself with very smart people, right? I'm not very smart. I'm not bookish at all. I'm not the kind of person who likes to read lots of data and all that. Uh, I'm better at summarizing. <laughs> I'm better at advocating what I learned, right? So I do surround myself with very, very smart people like you ladies, right? And, uh, you know, what I'm going to do after this, I'll probably immerse all the truth lessons in and, 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 make it as part of my being so that I can advocate it to other people, right? Yeah. So, 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 way of, sorry, yeah, go so, ahead. Sorry. So it's not really about, you know, again, it's not, um, you know, Tamina and Ghana, you know, you prepare and whatnot. I'm completely the opposite. I just wing it. <laughs> but I would, when I do wing it, um, it's also back from, you know, many years of experience of talking to people, working with people and working with all kinds of people. And that, that makes who I, you know, who I am today, and then hopefully, you know, that in some way uh, help to, I guess, impart knowledge and wisdom to other people. I'm at that age now, you know, yeah. <laughs> where where I I I am really share my experiences. Yeah. 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 So Lily's way of thriving is to chill, and I can't say Netflix to chill yeah. and to network, to yes. chill and to network. Yeah. Yes. With your network. Yeah. Yes. Oh, very good. Okay. Um, uh, Abir, do you want to go next? Yeah. But what frame? Um, what frame right helps frame you to to thrive? Yeah. I, I think the right frame of mind to thrive in this patriarchal society is that. So we've run five years now, right? And I've always assumed that everyone is aware of the issue of women empowerment, and gender diversity, and inclusion. And I always assume everyone is aware of the statistics as well media and then you speak to new people and then you gotta repeat the conversation over and over and over again and i there was this one point when i'm always on the phone with shamila about, about this like babe I think, I think i lost the argument just now you know like why are men still thinking in such a way and how do we educate them so, so there will be times i i don't i don't think there is a right frame of mind conversations in you know against the majority <laughs> But if you focus on what you're mm. doing, and if you're doing is right, and I think that's what matters, and you're not doing anything at the expense of the other race or the other, you know, older older people or younger people, it's all for the benefit. Of, uh, it's all for the benefit of everyone, and that's what I believe in. Mm. Um, right. Okay. Um, this is fantastic. Not, ah. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think what you're trying to say is two things here. Patience is a virtue because it can get very tiring. Um, patience as a frame yeah. of emotional state, 
But your uh, the frame the frame that you're talking about that I really like uh, to, to extract is about when you're in a space where you're thinking about the community as more important than yourself, you probably will thrive anyway. Is that what you're trying yes. to say? Yes, correct. Yeah, fantastic. And you've done a great job at that as well. Sham, what helps you to thrive? Um, for me, it's really going back to every time there's all this noise because, you know, the legal fraternity is, is chaotic, if you ask me. Mm. So it's, mm. it's knowing who you are and knowing mm. what your strengths are. And mm. after all that noise and commotion and chaos, you, who are you in the silence? And what do mm. you stand for? So it's about going back to mm. your roots, pretty much. Mm. You know, so nice. after all that drama and chaos and all of that with your clients and the judges and other lawyers and your opposing counsel, you just got to bring yourself, rein yourself in and ask yourself, okay, who am I in all of this chaos? <sighs> Sham, yeah. who are you now? My God. <laughs> <laughs> so you said rein it all in and ask yourself, who am I in this silence? Mm. Yes, within so yourself. Powerful. Yeah, within yeah. yourself. Uh, is it before? Okay, never mind. Is it after, it's fine. I was going to ask you a very <laughs> silly question. Um, so I think I think that's about as much time as we have uh, now. We're a little bit past the five thirty mark, but also because we started a little bit later. I just wanted to say I'm so grateful to have. Uh, I'm so grateful to COVID for bringing us together. We've never <laughs> had time to do this. Uh, one of you was asking if. It should be okay for me because I do this full time. It's not. You guys are like, uh, you ladies are the sixth interview. And um, I think there was a special shout out to Shamila from BFM who put up that four posters and it just got circulated like crazy. I think some of you, you would, ladies would have seen that as well. Kind of triggered it and nice. um, and, and therefore we're, we're all here together. Uh, it will be great to catch up again. Uh, there are so many people who have shared this poster, so please do share it live uh, feed to all of your friends. Um, can I just share a couple of things that have come up on Facebook users because I've completely forgot about you guys. I'm so sorry, ladies and men. Um, okay, Lisa says, my ex-boss said I should cry in court so that all the men will pity me and I will get my way. <laughs> Okay, please not again. This was not meant to be a gender-based thing. This was meant to be, um, you know, what happens to us when we're told off. But this is part of it. Uh, another Facebook user uh, said, keyboard clicking noise is coming through. I'm sorry. <laughs> we have been wondering who this Facebook ghost is that is pattering in the background. We've all tested our mics. Unfortunately, we couldn't fix that. And yeah. somebody says, uh, glad to hear from Abir and Charmila. Hey, hey, there's also Izana, Lily, um, and Tamina, and myself as well, okay? I'm only joking. <laughs> uh, we've lost uh, Tam for a little bit, but thank you so much, ladies. Is there anything you want to say at all, anybody, before we go? I, I just want to say thank you for doing this. I think it's amazing. I'm so right. glad I met all of you. Yeah. Uh, and, you know, I think we should do this more often. I mean, let's not wait for a pandemic to strike yeah. <laughs> for yeah, us to do this, will. you know. Yeah. And people to organize, yeah. too. <laughs> yeah, we yeah. Will, I, will definitely, I will definitely get uh, some of your help to, um, you know, just see how I can keep this going because obviously I can't do this on my own. Anybody else, anything that you want to say, parting words? Um, I'd like to say thank you to Kamencha and Juanita for, you know, being that trigger to <laughs> all of us together. <laughs> um, yeah, and uh, everybody, please stay safe, um, stay at home, you know, mm. keep yourself sane, um, and um, get on Zoom or StreamYard to, you know, get to talk to very smart people. Hmm. Uzana, anything you want to add? Yeah, I'm just I'm very grateful for the network, the very small and tight network of women who are the forefront of the work that we do. I mean, I know everyone here is outside of the conversation and I'm glad to have met them. So you see this same people again and again cause that, you know, through this time we're able to reflect and stand like as Sham so eloquently said, who are we in the subject? be able to propel ourselves mm -hmm. moving forward. This is, StreamYard is mm. the future of our work. You, you know? <laughs> absolutely, <laughs> absolutely. All right. Uh, the noise cracking is getting even louder. Abir, anything to add? 
Yeah, just a short one. A uh, shout out to all the mothers or parents who are, you know, oh yeah. children. <laughs> shout out to all of you. I don't know how you guys do it on a daily basis for like eighteen days now. So hang in there and be kind to yourself. <laughs> yeah, this is absolutely the time all of us single people or people without kids are saying, ah ha ha. Yeah. <laughs> Lily before before Lily came on the show, she put a note on her door saying that she's attending a a, a Facebook live. live. Do you want to say that? Uh, okay, I said you know, pre Facebook live uh, recording in progress. If you enter, <laughs> <the fire. laughs> and, they, and I and I understand she your daughter entered anyway, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's at the back yeah. there. But I think hey. she's you now. <laughs> you want to say hello as well? No, no, no. She's anti-social. She got a headset on already. All right. Okay. All right. Um, we are going to end this conversation now. Uh, but you know, sorry. Just for now, we're gonna end. But we will never stop the conversation. Yes. Yeah. Thank you. Bye, so guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye. 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 Thank you. Bye. Bye.